All right, guys, welcome to day like 14, I don't know, 15 of quarantine. Um, it's a lot harder to come up with ideas for videos than I thought, but it's also a lot harder to come up with ideas, make the video, execute everything for the video, and then put the video together and find like copyright free music for it all within a day. So totally giving up on the daily upload situation, but they will be somewhat consistent. Um, I hope everybody's healthy. I hope everybody's families are healthy. Um, as you know, I've been just shooting with myself. So I have another self-portrait series coming out here um, featuring this backdrop, which does have stars on it. I don't know if you can even see the stars because in the photos I was really excited that it had a star pattern on it and you can't tell, they just like, look like dots. So let's jump right in. Today's tip is how to make the like kind of kaleidoscope effect in Photoshop. Um, that's something I actually use pretty often. I think that um, it's super easy. You don't have to, you know, if you already have Photoshop, you don't have to buy those glass things you put around, your, you know, in front of your lens or all of those things. If you do like that style and you do, do want to get those, I'd absolutely recommend getting one. Um, but if you don't want to spend the money on it, especially right now, I doubt that anywhere would even ship it. But if you still want to try it, I'm going to show you how to do it in Photoshop. All right, let's just get right down to it. Um, so I'm gonna show you today on this photo that I already edited and retouched um, how to get that kaleidoscope effect in Photoshop. It's gonna be really easy. It's gonna be like literally a two-step process. But first things first, I actually just learned this, so it was super helpful for me. Since I have so many groups and layers over here and I have just so much like stuff going on, I want to merge it. I don't wanna merge everything, but I wanna create a new layer with everything on it. So if you have everything you need visible and you clicked Command Option Shift E on a Mac, I think it's gonna be Control Alt Shift E on a, on a PC. That's gonna combine every visible layer you have onto a separate layer. And so you can kind of edit that. And that's what I like to do, when, I, especially when I'm working on something really in depth. I don't like to merge and flatten the image as I go, um, just because I like to be able to go back if I need to. It does make a bigger file, especially if you're gonna save it for Photoshop, but. So we have our merge layer right here, layer 11. What I'm actually gonna do is make a copy of it. So what we're gonna do here is make sure that we're on our layer copy, our new layer copy layer and come over to our toolbar on the side here and select our stamp tool. Um, so there's two options in here. There's the pattern stamp tool and the clone stamp. You wanna make sure you're on the clone stamp tool, not the pattern. And to get in and out of those, you just right click on the side here. So we have our clone stamp here. Um, let's just say that what I want to clone is like the star around the eyes or something. It's not gonna be probably the best example, but just to show you guys what that would look like. For this clone stamp tool, what you need to do is you actually need to pick what it is that you want to be cloning and stamping. So in order to do that on a Mac computer, you're gonna hold down the option key and it's gonna come up with this little, little thing here. And that's how you can kind of choose where you want to clone. So now that we've picked where we wanna clone, I have the eye and I can stamp it anywhere I want. However, it's not gonna do exactly what you want. It's not just gonna be like stamp, 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 a bunch of stars. It's not gonna work out like that. Um, so what this does actually is when you choose where you want it to stay, this there's a crosshair right here and it actually moves along with you. So it can keep cloning the same, you know, it can keep cloning all around kind of what you wanted originally. Um, so in order to get the star, if you just wanted the stars cloned, you'd have to select it every time. So if you want to have just the stars all around, just keep selecting over by that eye between each you know new star that you paint or whatever. So that is one way to do it. It is a lot more tedious than just having the piece of glass to put in front of your camera. But I do find, at least for myself, that this way I have more control kind of, of what's being like reflected and refracted and mirrored and all of that. Um, I use this pretty often. I love it. I like using it. I think it adds a nice little quirkiness to my photos. So I'm going to just do another example of maybe what it would look like if I did the whole photo and go a little bit more in depth with it as well. So I have my new layer again. I just made a new copy. Um, and I'm going to select actually a little bit more of like the face and hair so you can kind of see how big my circle is right here. 
Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and select like maybe right here and then put that up there. So here's a good example of something that will get messed up by the crosshairs. Once they hit the edges of the canvas, they don't know what to do. Like it doesn't know what to clone anymore. So it does end up actually making that harsh line. Just as a heads up, just something to be aware of. Usually you can dodge it. So I wanna get the face as my option again, but it's actually picking up some of that second face right in here. So I'm gonna just go down to the, the, the original layer copy we made, copy that, copy the face on that layer, and then go back to our um, kaleidoscope layer. So obviously right now it looks way worse than it did before, but it is very fixable. Um, we're gonna come back over to our toolbar over here on the left. I'm actually gonna just grab my eraser tool. Um, I'm gonna bring the size up of it quite a bit, make it pretty big. So I'm gonna have a pretty soft brush. So I'm gonna make a big, um, soft round brush. I'm gonna turn the flow way, way down, just so that way we're not affecting a lot at the same time. I use a drawing tablet. Um, so I'm gonna turn this on here just because it's pressure sensitive. And we're just gonna go in and start erasing from that layer copy that we made all the stamps on. So 6% seems like that's like a little bit low and it's gonna take a long time to do anything. So if you just want it to kind of seem a little bit more like a kaleidoscope, again, this is like a really fast version of it. We can erase a lot of what is on the original face so that way we don't get distracted from that. You can kind of just smooth out all the edges from these these little cameos all around. I usually would suggest doing all of the clones on a separate layer, um, especially in this scenario that would have helped because I have these harsh lines right here. If this was on a separate layer, I could just go in and erase that separately. Um, but since it's not on a separate layer, if I erase that, I erase all of that what's in that face too. Um, let me just... Now that this looks worse than the beginning, we can go ahead and fix it. I actually went in and put all of my clone stamps on a separate layer, just so that way I have a little bit more control over them. If you can't tell, I'm a little bit of like a control freak when it comes to my documents here. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna first start by erasing everything I can off the face. So um, I have all of these layers here and you can kind of see where the face is on the side. So I'm just gonna go through each of these and erase what I think needs to go away from each layer. So I'll turn all the other ones off, except for the actual background layer and then that clone so I can actually see what it is that I want to erase. Let's see, we'll bring the flow up because now that I have a pretty good understanding of what I want to be erased, I don't need to have it as low. Really, one of the things I really don't want is like that harsh edge there. And then I don't want anything covering my face in the original photo. So that was super quick for me. I didn't take a ton of time to move them around or anything, but this is just after doing the clone stamp and the eraser tool. Now that you have all of these, and if you have them on different layers like I do, I actually can just go ahead and select those pieces and kind of move them around, which makes, which makes this a lot more um, controllable than having that actual tool. So I say after moving that stuff around, this looks pretty good based on what the, the point of the video is supposed to be. I think right here could use some erasing and maybe just some like lightening up, but otherwise things are pretty good. So what I would do is merge all these layers now that they're basically fine enough for what I'm looking for. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and hold shift and press all the layers I want to from the first to the last layer that I want to merge. Right click, merge layers. And now you have all of the clones on one layer instead of on different ones. Um, I'm not going to crop this just because I have other edits and everything on here and I don't want to actually crop my image, but you can go ahead and export that and then you basically have a kaleidoscope effect. Again, that was like a pretty quick tip how to video. Um, I'm trying to navigate and figure out how I can do more videos of like actually shooting since it's just with me. It's kind of hard to like talk and model and time it out properly with the camera and the clicker and everything. Um, but hopefully I have something cooler for you soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe down here, whatever side it's on. I'm not a YouTuber enough to know, but it's down here somewhere. Um, and then let me know if you guys have any more questions or ideas, feel free to reach out about any editing questions or anything. I have gotten a couple inquiries about retouching and how I go about doing that. That is super, super specific and nitpicky for me. So I do want to make it like an actual, actual good video. Um, <laughs> so I will be working on that. Um, I also lied to you. But what had happened was, was that the power went out, but I thought that that light was dead because it's super old and I was just like, okay, I guess it's just garbage and doesn't work. So I ended up doing this shoot instead, but since the power was out, the light does still work. So I will have that shoot. Um, I'll, I'll do something for that shoot. Like I said, with that vintage light and let you guys know if it works and if I can create anything cool with it. Um, yeah, thanks again for watching like and subscribe. I think I'm going to try to do like kind of a cool art show after this, but I'll keep you guys posted on it. Let me know if anybody is interested in being part of an art show after this. I know we're all making a lot of cool stuff and I would love to just have an opportunity to like showcase it all when we all can come back outside and share our talents with the world.